Funimation actually did it, ladies and gentlemen. If you guys are not watching the English dub for Dragon Ball Super, this little mini arc we are about to go into right now is going to be a very good treat for everyone that loves and watches the English dub for Dragon Ball Super, but in Dragon Ball in general, because this little mini arc is bringing together the two iconic voices that have voiced the character of Vegeta throughout Dragon Ball Z's English dub run. Not only are we having Chris Sabat voicing Vegeta, but the clone of Vegeta that was created within this episode is being voiced by Brian Dromond. It's over 9,000! What 9,000? The ocean dub voice actor for Vegeta, the iconic meme of it's over 9,000, that voice actor is back in this episode, back for this mini arc, and I am super excited about this. I was not excited for these filler episodes, I guess you could say, of Dragon Ball Super that we were kind of going to the end of the year. But having two iconic voices of Vegeta within this little mini arc, this is going to be a lot of fun. So welcome Brian Drummond back to Dragon Ball. This is an awesome, awesome treat. But we're talking about episode 44 for the English dub of Dragon Ball Super. And in the grand scheme of things, this is a very simple episode. But what I liked about this episode is that it really focused on Trunks and Goten. This is a very heavy Trunks and Goten episode, which I thoroughly enjoyed because I like these characters and I like getting to see them, you know, kick some ass in this episode. And also what I've noticed as well is that with these filler episodes, Monaka is starting to get a lot of shine, which is very welcomed, but I was not expecting the amount of screen time that Monaka was going to be getting within these filler episodes. So the main crux and plot for this episode is that basically it revolves around this planet named Potipu, or Potipu, whatever how you pronounce it, but we have Monaka basically delivering throughout this entire episode, and Trunks and Goten find their way and get trapped onto Monaka's delivery ship. And I do like the little nod that they have when Trunks finds the sword, and it's a nice little callback to basically future Trunks, you know, because he had a sword whenever he fought and everything. So that was a nice little Easter egg, nice little wink wink to everybody that really, really loves future Trunks as a character, but Trunks and Goten basically get trapped on the ship. Monaka has no idea that they are back there after he got delivering some sweets to Bulma's Capsule Corp location, and then immediately goes for delivery to planet Potipu, and then it's not until he gets there that he realizes that Trunks and Goten were actually on his ship the entire time. And there's even this very weird and funny moment when Monaka is just listening to this underwear commercial on the radio, and then one of his questions that he's submitted ended up being pulled for the mailbag. That was a really weird like section right there, but I love like the radio voice guy just basically saying like, we gotta pull out some better questions for this. But Monaka's really happy about that. I really did like that section. But once we get onto Potipu, that's where kind of the action takes place. We have this gang of bastards, or at least that's what the main guy living on this planet referred to these villains, the guy known as Botish carrying like a pacifier key on his necklace, but he ends up running into these thugs, running into Monaka, Trunks, and Goten, and Trunks and Goten make very, very quick work of this gang of bastards, but they end up getting the upper hand because once they end up falling back, they end up finding the pacifier that like fell on the ground and capturing Monaka after he just fainted once the fight started. So once they have those two under their grasp, they are able to like basically capture uh, Bosik, trunks and Goten and go to this area where he was basically concealing this vault that was holding the superhuman water. They end up unlocking it and then it kind of cuts to commercial for the halfway point for the episode. And it's not until later that we find out that these guys were covered in this purple goo of the superhuman water. But back on Earth, Bulma ends up seeing through security cameras that Trunks and Goten ended up stowing away on Monaka's ship and she tasks Vegeta and Jocko to go to planet Potipu and to get back Trunks and Goten. And this is a very funny dynamic too because Jocko and Vegeta do not get along whatsoever. And I also do like the callback within this episode when Jocko's listening to the radio and the radio announcer is basically talking about how to start a conversation. And Jocko's like, I do not want to start a conversation with this guy because he does not want to know what is on my mind. And I'm very curious to know what is on Jocko's mind when he wants to talk to Vegeta. But that was a very funny moment. And it also goes to show that Bulma 
Carmella not only has Jocko around her finger, but also Vegeta as well, because he was cowering in fear whenever Bulma got in his face, which is a nice change of pace, I guess you could say, because the old Vegeta would not put up with that whatsoever. So this really goes to show the character changes that Vegeta has gone through after being married to Bulma for so long. And we also really have this really short section of Goku training on King Kai's planet. And this kind of brings up the problem with last episode when Goku was having energy problems. He couldn't regulate his energy properly. He's fully healed now. He's practicing on King Kai's planet. He wants to go train with Beerus and Whis, but Whis is actually unavailable at the moment. So King Kai's planet will have to do. And that was a really short short section within this episode, but it's once Jocko and Vegeta make their way to planet Potapu, they end up saving Trunks, Goten, Monaka, and Potosh from the gang of bastards, or now the purple goo on them, and then basically makes very quick work of them. Like, he honestly dealt some serious blows to these guys. They did not stand a chance, but then Vegeta kind of gets caught off guard when the purple goo ends up absorbing him, ends up spitting him out, and all of his energy is basically tapped. It's gone, and that is when we get the reveal that Brian Dromond is voicing the goo duplicate Vegeta. This is just such an iconic moment right now, having the two voices that have voiced Vegeta over the course of the Dragon Ball franchise for the English dub, two iconic voices, Brian Droman from the Ocean dub for Vegeta, and then Chris Sabat for the Funimation dub for Vegeta. Like, this is just so, so cool. I am really looking forward to the next episode because we're gonna, like, I saw the preview, and Brian Droman gets to say some iconic lines for the duplicate Vegeta, like the Gallic gun, so this is just very, very cool. If you guys have not yet watched this episode, definitely go do that right now, just to see, and just to have this glimpse of two iconic voices for Vegeta finally working together and voicing and talking with each other back and forth. So that is basically going to be my review for the English dub episode 44 for Dragon Ball Super. I am really now looking forward to the next episode, episode 45. I don't know if we're going to have a break with the holidays, but I believe episode 45 will come out next week. But until then, I will talk with you guys later. See you later, guys. God,